Today's video, section 3.3, we're going to look at proving lines to be parallel. Uh, again, this goes right hand in hand with the previous video as far as corresponding angles and what have you. So uh, the first is the corresponding angles converse. Recall a converse of a statement is to flip-flop the if and the then part. So um, that's what we're doing in this section. We're flip-flopping the statements that we made in section 3.2. So, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent, that means the lines are parallel. So, in the diagram, if you know that these two angles have the same measure, you can conclude that line J and line K have to be parallel to one another. So, in example one here, it says find the value of X that makes the two lines parallel. If the two lines are parallel, then what that means is that these are corresponding angles. They would have to be the same measure. So, 5X minus 7 would have to be the same as 98. Add the 7 to both sides, so 5x is equal to 105. Divide both sides by 5, so x would have to be 21 here in order for those two lines to be parallel. Uh, the alternate interior angles converse, again, same idea. Uh, when the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles have to be congruent. Alternate exterior, same thing. Okay, uh, If two lines are cut, so the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Uh, again, just building off of the previous lesson. And then this one is the, is the only one that's different. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So if angle 3 and angle 5 add up to 180 or are supplementary, then the lines are parallel to one another. Okay, so example 2 says find the value of x that makes m and n parallel. First, identify the angle relationship that we're talking about here. Um, these two angles are same side interior. And so if the lines are parallel, then same side interior angles have to be supplementary. And so 3x plus 15 plus 75 would have to equal 180. So all I'm going to do now is use my algebra skills to solve here. So 3x plus, that's going to be 90 equals 180. Subtract your 90 from both sides. Okay, so you get 3x equals 90. And that means that x would have to equal 30 in order for the lines to be parallel. Okay, so again, just applying these different theorems. Uh, how can you tell whether the sides of uh, the flag of Nepal are parallel? Well, clearly here they mark that this angle and this angle are congruent. And since those are alternate interior and congruent, that means the lines have to be parallel. So you would say here alternate interior alternate interior angles converse okay alternate interior angles converse all right and then we're going to finish up here looking at a couple proofs um, in the figure we know that the lines are parallel and we also know that angle one is congruent to angle three prove that x and y are parallel okay um, so we know a and b are parallel so statement one is obviously all the given information i'm not going to rewrite that okay so Statement two, what do I know based on the diagram? Well, if A and B are parallel, then what that means is that angle one has to be congruent to angle two. So angle one, congruent to angle two, corresponding angles postulate. Right? If the lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. Okay? Well, now, okay, we already knew up here that angle one was congruent to angle three. So one's congruent to three, one's congruent to two. So angle two is congruent to angle three. Okay, transitive property. Okay, so now we've said two and three are congruent. Well, now we can say, and we actually, there's one extra step here. X has to be parallel to Y because angle two and angle three are alternate exterior angles. So that's the alternate exterior angles converse. Again, once you've shown that alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. Okay, this proof... We know that the line X and Y are parallel, so X and Y are parallel. 1 is congruent to 3. Prove that A is uh, parallel to B. Okay? A is parallel to B. So uh, for this particular argument, you're going to go pretty much, it's the same type of proof, but you're going to go the other way. So I'll talk you through it. I'll let you write it on your own, but I'll talk you through it. So angle 3 and angle 2 are alternate exterior, and we already know that these lines are parallel. Therefore, they must be congruent. So step 2 is going to say, two and three are congruent, all right? And then once you know that, well, then angle two and angle one have to be congruent because of transitive property. And then once you know that, A and B have to be parallel because of the corresponding angles converse. 
So again, uh, if you're saying lines are parallel, you're using the converse of one of your theorems. Okay, and then finally, the transitive property of parallel lines simply says, if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So in example six, it says uh, each pole is parallel to the one directly to its right. Explain why the leftmost pole must be parallel to the rightmost pole. Well, by definition, or based on what they're telling me, is this pole and this pole are parallel. This pole and this pole are parallel. This one and this one are parallel. This one and this one, you get the idea. Everyone were directly to the right. And so, therefore, by the transitive property of parallel lines, all of them must be congruent to each other. So again, I think um, you'll find that the proofs in this section are much more straightforward and much easier than what we were dealing with before. And uh, hopefully that these ideas are fairly straightforward for you. Uh, as always, bring questions, have them ready to go in class.